Hey. Hello. Uh, okay. Hey guys, how's it going? We are a Thursday evening in the UK. Thursday evening UK time. And I want to try and do another interview today. Um, try and get up to two a week if I can. Do Sundays. And um, get one done on a Thursday evening today as well. Uh, with Brother Sky, see if he's a and um, see what we can learn today, if he comes on. Because, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's gonna, the brother's going to come on, but if he does, then that'll be fucking cool. We can talk a little bit about what he's good at, massage therapy. He's a massage therapist, a masseuse, professional masseuse. So we can watch and learn about cannabis, I believe, as well. And... Uh, um, her, which is fucking cool, making money, young person, young, ambitious, full of knowledge, full of health, full, uh, vegan, I think, as well, so, you know, so these are all things we can learn, come on, just, just try and, we, we, I've been talking to him behind the scenes, so I think he will come on, there might be a few issues, but, you know, if not, I'll just talk about um, my experiences with the brothers doing the fasting and, and breaking the fast, and what I'm doing since I've broken the fast, um, to maintain good health and not go back into too bad toxic habits. I'll definitely talk about that as well. So I'll give you some value today. I won't just go off straight away. Um, hi, Susie, mate. Nice to meet you again. Um, I do love you for doing it. And um, I'm very proud of all my, my favorite, favorite kind of people. All my health people are my favorites. My, my favorite favorite are the Shivambu brothers and sisters. People that stand here in therapy are my favorite kind of people. I don't know why. It's, it's, my bias is urine, and I fucking love it, and I do it every day, when I'm not dry fasting, and it's just one of the most powerful medicines, and it also shows me that people are woke, because you have to be awake to understand and practice urine therapy, you can't stay asleep, you can't stay asleep and do urine therapy, it's impossible, you have to get undo, undo the programming, the, the, the urine is a waste, which is such a big endemic fucking bullshit that society is preaching to us, so you have to, you know, do these things. So, Sky Mate, if you're watching, um, please do jump on. Um, I've tried to get you on before, but I really would like, um, I don't know how many times we can keep trying and not getting you on, dude. So, this is like, like last, chance, last chance saloon for us, I think. And um, you do want to get your message out there, so I do want to learn from you, bro. You know, do a video, and you're very keen. You know, a lot of people aren't keen, so I appreciate the fact that you want to do a video with us today. I want to learn about more. I want to go deep into massage. I do want to talk a little bit about um, what I noticed with... Um, I will talk about it if Sky doesn't come on. Um, when I was doing the hard dry fast and doing some little protocols like peanut lacrosse um, massaging in my back, um, I noticed something very powerful which you guys might find interesting about massage and dry fasting or massage and fasting. I think you'll find it fascinating. I certainly found it fascinating when I did it. I couldn't believe how I was feeling. It's crazy powerful. So yeah, let's wait a little bit before I just ramble on about the um, my experiences with the hard dry fast with the brothers and breaking it and what I'm going to do the next couple of weeks and got to give people a chance, yeah, give people a chance to just like, you know, you know, run off. Just appreciate you, all you guys watching. Um, Skymate, if you're on there, I said I was going live, dude, so please do jump on. Please do. There is nothing to fear except fear itself, right? You know, the funny thing with this is a lot of people don't like to do lives because they're worried what other people think of them. Well, I, 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 it happens to me as well. I'm not saying Sky is, I'm just, I'll talk re generally. A lot of people won't do these um, lives because they feel it's not their strength of personality. They feel that um, they don't like to be on camera. They'd rather do the, the work behind. That's cool. But I, nor did I. I'm a shy guy. I'm a fucking introvert. I like, like being by myself. I do not like, despite what you guys may think, like being on camera all the time you know, and putting my brand and putting my name and helping people in such an overt way on Facebook Lives and Facebook. I don't like doing it. I mean, I didn't. I enjoy it now, but I was never good at it. And I'm not saying I'm good at it now. I'm just making a point in life. We have to face our fears and do things. The only way to get good and confident at something is to just to man up and do it a lot of times. And then you get the confidence to talk about the things that matter in life because you can have a lot of knowledge, but it's kind of useless unless you're helping other people with that knowledge. How do you help other people with that knowledge? by talking about it in real life, by going on Facebook, um, building communities on Facebook, doing Facebook Lives, doing videos, um, going on Instagram, talking about the things you know, building relationships with real people, answering their questions on health, and all these kind of things. It's how we build confidence. You don't want to comp c contain this information. You don't want to let your fears dictate your um, life. 
And I think a lot of people, I'm not just speaking of Sky, I'm not speaking of Sky, I'm just speaking generally here. A lot of people, including myself in the past, have let my fears dictate and stop me from doing the things that I need to do in, in terms of helping people. And I've got my own fears to break through even now. I was talking to John about this yesterday um, that I'm aware of, but that's the key. We all have fears, individual fears, but awareness is key. And then you've got to break through those fears. You've got to take action on those fears. So the first stage is to be aware of your fears, to own up to it, to be a fucking man. And then the second stage, that, that's a lot of people don't even get to that stage. A lot of people are just like, oh, I'm too afraid to do this and start my own business and do the health thing or to go traveling or go in a van or go travel the world. I'm too afraid to do that. I'm too afraid to give up my job because uh, my job gives me money and bloody blah bullshit. Yeah, but that's the story of other people's lives and they'll stay with very small influence on a few people in their lives and that'll be the story of their life. They'll, in they'll impact very few people and that's very sad to me that people have such inf small influence on their circle of friends. A limited amount of friends, that's all they'll ever do. I don't think that's what me, you and the people watching here want to do, have a limited impact. I certainly don't. I just want to give as much as I, I, I can... Give as much as I know and help to other people. And, and in my mind, I fucking know a lot. I do and I don't. I've got a lot to learn. But I do fucking know a lot from my own wisdom, which is experiential. From, for example, with the brothers, we, we've done seven days fasting. They did urine fasting. I did dry fasting. That's how we get wisdom. I didn't listen to a doctor. I didn't read a book on science. I went and got the wisdom. Me and the brothers got the wisdom from my own fucking experience on how fasting works and how powerful it is. We got wisdom on detox, on going through low moods, um, lack of energy, and then coming back from it, how much more energy we had. We got this wisdom for our own hard work. Yeah? Not from books. I'm not saying books are bad, but it's important that we get wisdom from these sources. Yeah, it's ourselves. Ourselves are all powerful. I see Ozzy commenting here. Ozzy's a big fan of it, like me. You guys as well. The body is all powerful. The body is wise. The body knows how to heal itself. We must get back to it by taking action on our health. And then you'll realize what is the most powerful health protocols. And rest assured, um, fasting is the fastest way to health. Fasting, fastest way to health. Because the body knows how to heal itself. You just need to get out of your fucking way. Get out of its own way. And let it heal itself. I'm not talking about, you don't need her suit drugs. You know, all these things, you don't need them. You just need to get out of the body's way and discipline yourself to, to start practicing non-eating uh, for time and then build it up slowly to longer periods. Then you'll see the powers of your own body, you know? They're beautiful. Yeah, it's very sad, isn't it? People that are consciously aware, they just sit back. Um, I'll see, very, very, very sad. Um, living lives of um, very little influence. It's like this. If you're so happy and healthy and you've come such a long way in your journey, why would you not want to give that to other people for free? I think people don't optimize their vehicle that much. They don't have much wisdom. That's why they don't speak about it and don't step up to the platform of like spreading their knowledge to the masses. They don't do it because they know in their minds they haven't taken a lot of action on their health. They haven't become happier. They're just they're just living at a plateau of like average. The happiness they had at thirteen was the same happiness they've got now, if not worse. They haven't had to, a hero's journey to overcome, which is very sad. I don't think there's no, there's nothing there. For, there's nothing to make them a better person. There's no, um, what do you call it, a rock bottom for a lot of people in society, which makes them, it's not about health, is it now, but listen, there's, everyone needs a hero's journey. I think a lot of the people I relate to the best here, my friends, have been on some kind of hero's journey, some kind of suffering, some some kind of darkness, which has made us fucking bigger. Yeah, I'll just talk about fasting, because I don't think Sky's going to come on, which is a big shame. He hasn't messaged me either. He would come up with my messages. So, yeah, ask me any questions, by the way, but me, John, and Jack, I'm at Jack's place, um, Shivambu Brothers. Re um, since last Tuesday, we began a fast, which I'm sure some of you guys have seen on the videos. I'll talk a little about it. We went on a different protocol, um, but still fasting. Uh, seven day... Well, we didn't plan it for seven days, huh? We just said indefinitely, right? We took it one day at a time. I think I like that idea. Don't don't set yourself up for failure by... That's number one piece of advice. Don't set yourself up for failure by saying to people on Facebook, by the way, I saw someone today, um, bless him, Somebody I saw on my Facebook said, I'm going to do a 40-day fast on solar urine and dry fasting at the end. And you know what? I love that post, and I'm going to prop people up for doing it. But I also recognize in the back of my mind, and I'm not being mean, but a lot of people say this. <laughs> a lot of people say they're going to do 30, 40-day fasts. And, when it, and, you know, I think they do it a little bit for likes and validation, encouragement. Encouragement, yes, but I think it's a little bit of validation seeking. And when it comes to it, they won't get to 40 days. <laughs> you fucking won't. You need to build it up slowly. You can't go from, like, 
I've done intermittent fasting for 22 hours, no food, no water, and now I'm gonna do a 40-day fast. It's not how it works, guys. How do I know? <laughs> it didn't work for me. You've got to build it up slowly. You, you know, it's all well and good saying I want to do 40 days, but it's, don't don't tell people how long you're gonna do. I think that's that's one thing I'm learning. Um, John's giving me that one. That's fucking. I appreciate that one for sure. Um, yeah, let me just read comments quickly. Yeah, okay. So we did a seven day. Um, in the end, it was seven and a half days, and we did different. John Jack did a urine fast. Um, um, maybe a couple of days their urine was really good tasting, but then of course, as you plug deeper into a detox, urine becomes nasty, acidic, and the toxins start flooding out as you go super deep into healing. So uh, their piss started tasting really bad, and I've, I've got some of that piss as well that I drank today, and oh, it's nasty. It's fucking nasty shit, you know, and um, I know you can drink it, because I, I listen to people on Facebook, Monica um, uh, or on Amira talk about drinking it, um, but it's really hard to drink, and even they struggle. Even the hard people like me, I fucking struggle with that shit, so yeah, they were, they were spilling some of their fucking their urine in day three and four and five, I but drink, but topping up, hydrating still with distilled water, which is good, and um, they had some lemon tea, which is alright, it's very little, lemon's pulling anyway, and uh, I mean, it's just little stuff, you know, black, um, Jack, John, no, Jack had um, black coffee, and um, yeah, it's, it's minor stuff, it's still fasting, remember that, it's still a um, solid food break, and the body's going such in deep detox, it was making the piss bad, so yeah, we did, they did that, and we got to seven and a half days, and I did it differently, I did it um, hard, right? Because I wanted to put to the test the power of hard dry and see if I can do it. My previous best was, was eight to two hours, which isn't that much actually. So and that was last year when I was more hardcore than <laughs> now. There's only like three and a half days. Um so in effect I've done double over double what I've ever done before. And um I'll tell you something now, I could have gone longer as well. Which is crazy to think. I I crazy proud of myself, I could have gone longer. I could have gone to two or three days in my mind. I was gonna definitely do that. So I definitely got to 8, but I was thinking 9, 10, and then and I was going to break it on Saturday. So I'm not going to lie, I was going to break it on, on day 10, or day 9, really day 10. But I was going to break it with aged urine, I think, on Friday, and Saturday I was going to um, eat some fruits, break it with fruits. So I was going to get to 10, but it doesn't matter, I'm, I'm very happy. Um, I learned a fucking shit ton about the powers of dry fasting. Um, it is powerful. Shavabu fasting is powerful too, but I really hard dry is... um. It's it's so hard. Um, I can honestly say it's hard to describe to you. Um, I pr it is the thing with me. One of the reasons why I found it ca it's hard, but I also found it easy. Um, listen to the paradox of what I just said there, and and the reason why is because I prepped for this, or I'd been prepping with the health thing by always doing twenty one to twenty two hours every day for weeks now of hard dry fasting. So I was eating one meal a day. Great foods, by the way, mostly not fruit, and um, with aged urine. And slight amount of distilled water in a two to three hour window. And then not touching water, unless I got caught out in the rain, which was rare. It's in my house. Um, I would go 21 to 22 hours the next day dry fasting. And what I witnessed doing this for the last couple of weeks um, is that my body started getting muscle mass. Uh, my body started getting really muscular. Um, there was no extra weight in my face. My face looked very smooth. Um, I felt amazing. My brain was very smart. I was very sharp. I could exercise a lot still because I had the energy from the one meal a day and the aged urine combination. So I had I had very little food in me. Uh, or I, or I ate big one meals a day too. But it was only one meal a day. But and it was the aged urine and that dry fasting gap. It was very. It's a. It's a very. I've said this before. It's a very powerful protocol. I would like everybody to be on really. Um, if you want to optimize your health for a daily basis and you're you're too scared to do daily fat um prolonged water shivambu dry fasts i um if you're scared to do that shit i can tell you now a very powerful protocol is this the one meal a day even eating crappy food with aged urine and within two to three hour window and i'm talking about 300 400 mils of aged urine not even that old four or five days fine drinking it and then maybe a little bit of five ten minutes rubbing your face with aged urine and a little bit of distilled water and that's it boom and then go hard dry till the next day very powerful protocol i will speak more of that i'm going to write a book on that protocol because I think that is my jam. That is a very powerful, very powerful for health. You will be healthier than a lot of other people out there if you do just that one. <laughs> and that's not even eating fruits, your optimal diet. You'll still be healthier than a lot of other people just doing that one. Also, including that exercising um, during the day. A little bit of exercise during the day to keep your oxygenation levels up. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think where I'm going with this. So yeah, um, the hard dry fast. 
it was broken. Um, I, I'll be honest with you though, I, I didn't post, post pictures. My face was looking very gaunt. I could see there was a lot of water gone out on this hard dry fast. It's not a bad thing. It's not dehydration to the point that I was going to die. Because Eric talks about this in his books, that there's a point during a fast where your body is literally telling you you need to drink water or eat food or you're going to die. That's when your body can't take it anymore. But I did not get to that stage in the hard dry fast of 7.5 days. I also know people that have done 11 days. Sean Walsh is one of them. Lovely brother. He's done 11 days dry fasting. So I get to the point of, um, you know, I'm going to die. If I did, I would have fucking broken it. I'm not fucking stupid. I know the difference. But I will admit that from day three onwards, I had a constant nagging um, uh, taste of dehydration on my mouth. Not seriously, deathly, death dehydration, the real dehydration that's going to kill me, just a fake, this is what I call it, a fake dehydration. Just in the, and I call it fake dehydration because I liken it to the same dehydration, you, the same hunger pang, which is fucking fake, that the parasites give you when you go on a water fast or a dry fast. These are all fake pains. The hunger pain is just, I'm saying it. So that permanent feeling of dry fasting in my body, um, the dehydrated state in my mouth and throat, it's fake. And I'll tell you another thing. It was constant, but you get used to it. I noticed this. I got used to that feeling of dehydration in my mouth and throat. It didn't affect me. I mean, yes, I would have liked water and have broken it, but it didn't affect me enough to, to, to force me to drink anything. It really didn't. Um, I just took it as part of the process of healing. Because rest assured, dry fasting is the deepest healing you could ever get. Very deep, steady level. You're using, you're using your own body's metabolic water there's two things actually and um john's what john's right about this as well and other people are right when they say that there's moisture in the air so when you dry fast you're forcing your body to use moisture in the air up the nose uh, you get moisture from the air more it cleanses the skin the water moisture from the air gets in your nose and it goes through the skin and feeds you but beyond that when you're dehydrating yourself you get your own metabolic water you start making your own metabolic water endogenic water so when you stop taking exogenic water, water from an outside source, like distilled water from fruits or from water drinking or rainwater or whatever, you start creating, your body starts going into this mode of desperation and it starts creating its own water. And it takes off the, I believe this video is on this, it takes off the satur the hydrogen from the saturated fat. Because saturated fat is full of hydrogen bonds. It takes away the hydrogen and then there's the oxygen from the air you breathe and it creates H2O. But it creates H2O of the most purified form of H2O you will ever taste and have in your body circulating in your life. Pure fucking H2O. The purest of the pure. If you think urine therapy is pure water, uh, you'll find the dry fasting water that you produce from your own metabolic endogenic water is pure and purer. In fact, it's so pure that, um, uh, you know, I've done, not done much research, but I've heard that this, there's this thing called deuterium, which is um, a composite of hydrogen. And deuterium, you guys may well know, please put in the comments if you do know something about deuterium, it's something we don't want in our body, right? And one of the only ways to remove deuterium, this hydrogen composite from the body, is to dry fast. So I find that another powerful way, a uh, powerful motivation for me and hopefully for you guys to do more dry fasting. You remove your body's deuterium levels. There's people that say deuterium is so bad that it's a reason for aging. I don't know if it is. There's so many reasons why we age, right? But I'm just saying that you want to find as many reasons why to dry fast. Well, there's one. It removes your body's deuterium levels. Your brain feels amazing. Your um your body goes into a super fucking deep, deep and at, at the point of the dry fast there's no um energy for f being broken down or wasted on food but also there's no energy being taken out with the water because I, I really believe that water even shivambu slows down the, the 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 system it takes a little bit of not a lot compared to food food's the worst and fruit is very little but still something but well, cooked foods take way too much energy. Uh, but I believe that even water and distilled water and urine, your own urine, which is just you, right? It takes up a little bit of energy in your system. So when you don't put anything in your system, you go nil by mouth, dry fasting, that is a complete 100% energy towards healing bo the body. The longer you go into a dry fast, the more, this is, this is a quote, right? Quote me on this, guys. The longer you go into a dry fast, the deeper the body can go to cleanse toxins from deep within your system. Th th hear that? The longer you dry fast, or fast, but dry fasting is the best. The longer you go, the deeper the body gets to go, the deeper the body can go to clean toxins from deep within your system. I'm not talking about toxins from last week, the shit you ate last week. I'm talking about toxins from your childhood. Childhood drugs, childhood poisons, 
happens, childhood crap that's stuck in your colon, mucoid plaques that are stuck in your colon, all that kind of stuff, like the ancient stuff that's been sitting in there and it's been piling up on top. And now you've gone such a deep cleanse with the dry fast for a long period of time, you're going deep into a healing, uh, uh, deep into a level of healing. Like, you know a way of putting it? I put it as, um, it's like a factory reset. You come out into this world kind of perfect as a baby, kind of, because you're still poisoned by the mum, the plus the blood in the mum's percent is not perfect. It's still poison in the environment, but as a baby, you're probably the most pure you're ever going to be. So when we do these fasting of like long shavambu fasts or long dry fasts, what you're doing is you're resetting the body to a factory settings. That's how I look at it. D. Murphy gave me that one. I think it's a very profound statement. Um, sorry. Yeah, so it, it just resets the body. It resets the organs. Your organs get a, a break from work. They can go about healing. The liver can recuperate and maximize its efficiency. All of them, all organs can work properly. The blood gets oxygenated better. The um, toxins get taken out from deep within. The lymph gets flown like a fucking cream machine. There's just no way that any disease or any kind of problems or meta anything bad can survive, you know, five, six, seven days of a hard dry fast or 10, 15, 20 days of a water fast. It's impossible. These toxins can't, can't survive. But then it's not even about toxins. It's about layers of um, vibration. So once the toxins are gone, you can start building your vibration and purifying your vessel. Um, so yeah. I want to talk about one thing that's kind of relevant to the dry fast, because I was Sky's not come here, so I don't think he wants to come on today, which is fine. Um, he's a massage therapist, and um, I noticed on day six and day five of massage of my dry fast, um, I went and used a peanut lacrosse ball, which is like two lump, two polar across walls I think or whatever it is you put it on your back and your legs and you massage your body with it right it's kind of like a self-massage tool and um, normally when I do that on my one meter day protocol with hard dry fasting and urine therapy normally when I put it in my back I feel like a, a pleasure of like the toxins coming out it feels really crazy if you can relate to this when you massage when you get a massage normally when you're not dry fasting for a long period of time not a fan of a period of time when you dry fast um, or fast or whatever, you get this good feeling when someone rubs you down on a massage in your shoulders. In other words, you get this tension in your shoulders, there's tension in your body, um, there's tension there. And that's why massage feels good, because massage is removing the pains, aches and toxins, pains, aches and toxins and tension in your body. Massage removes that, and especially so for the ordinary people that don't take their care of their health. Now, I do take care of my health on a daily basis. But I've never done a prolonged hard dry fast like this. So normally when I'm taking care of my, my health on a daily basis, working with detox, I use the peanut lacrosse at night time. I feel a very pleasurable sexual, actually it's very fucking sexual. I, can't, I liken it to sex actually. It's a very sexual sensation when I put my peanut lacrosse across my back. Across my back specifically. I don't know if it's because my back's got a lot of toxins. It's, a, it's also a weak area of my body. That, that's the one I'm trying to communicate to you. It's a, it's a very, there's a lot of pains, aches and toxins in my back. Normally. When I did a dry fast on day five and six, I used the peanut lacrosse on the back and I rubbed it over and I didn't feel like there was any tension, toxins or pain in my back at all. I didn't get that pleasure sensation and it fucked with my mind. I was like, why am I not feeling any pleasure from doing this? And then I just kind of clicked because I've dry fasted the most powerful healing modality in the world, by the way. Possibly one and two of age urine. Number one. I've been f for doing it for five days at that point. Hard dry fast, not even allowing water contact with my skin. Then I did the massage on myself with the peanut cross. And there was no benefit because the hard dry fast had completely removed all the little toxins, all the little pains, all the little aches in my body. The dry fasting. My body is all powerful. It was telling me this. My body was telling me I am all powerful. I didn't even need the peanut across. I didn't need massage at that point. A massage, day five, day six. If I went and got a massage, I'm not I'm not dissing massage because I fucking think it's powerful shit. I'm making a point that hard dry fasting at day four, five, and six for me had done the job way better than a massage ever could. Massage is damage control. Listen to what I just said. Massage is damage control if you're if you're still eating a crappy diet. Even if you're eating fruits, um, but you're not, you know, it's 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 always damage control. But I'm telling you how dry fasting got me to that point five days in where there was no toxins, no pain, 
no aches in my body, so I was not receiving any benefit. I'd never, I never had the pinto cross up my back like that and felt no benefit. It always felt amazing, always did. So that was a powerful. This is a powerful reference experience I've had. Very powerful. This is why I love health. I get powerful little nuggets of wisdom which I fucking love and I geek up about. And then I, then it, then I click. Oh shit! This is why people say dry fasting is so powerful. My body is pure. There is no pains, aches, and toxins in my body anymore. Holy shit, this is crazy stuff, you know. I just saw something from Sandy, because she does massage for me, I want to read it. Yes, it definitely does loosen up um, the lacrosse ball, all your muscles, Sandy. I'm 100% with you, and I'm down with massage therapy. What I'm saying is that if once you get into day four, five, it's a hard dry fast, you don't even need massage. It does the same thing, and more powerfully. Your body is all powerful, it knows how to heal itself from all aches and pains. So what I'm thinking is, if you've got a sports injury, if you've got an ache and pain that's been riding you for 10, 20 years, do a 5-day, 6-day, 7-day, 8-day hard dry fast, not water fast, hard dry, and watch that pain go away. Just disappear forever, forever, mate. Until you retox with food again, but I mean, it's all good, it's all good. It's all good. Yes, and um, yes, definitely, all this, you know, that's another thing Sandy brought up, like, um, that's a good point, acids, acids make pain lactic acid it's an acid lactic acid is a lack of oxygen and alkalinity within your body you know and acids do cause the muscles to cramp up really easily people that are acidic and unhealthy they get um, muscle cramps and they can't exercise for long because they're eating acidic foods they're not exercising alkalizing themselves with aged urine or fruits they're not grounding with these alkalizing protocols their body's acidic so therefore their muscles get acidic super fucking quick there's no oxygen in the system to alkalize so they get super fucking um their muscles cramp up easily and there's aches and pains um, and there's a lot of lactic acid in that system like Sandy says so you need to so massage in that in that instance normal people okay here's the thing normal people need to be having massages every single day in my opinion every single day but they won't <laughs> it's up to us to do get the massages every now and then but the normal people won't because it's too expensive right and they're the ones that need it the most that's the irony of the health community I think the ones that need our advice that I'm not speaking to right now, because they won't listen to me, they just laugh at what I'm saying. They're the ones that need help the most, but they won't listen to up to me and to you guys. They just don't listen. It's okay. We just plant seeds, you know. Yeah, Sandy, mate. I wish I wish more people would be. You know, Doctor Morse is definitely right. This is a big thing that I think with Doctor Morse has got bang on. Fruits, hundred percent awesome. And then you combine that with what he's preaching now. He wasn't all the time, but now he's preaching dry fasting. It's a very powerful combo. You alkalizing and then dry fasting. 16 8 hours 14 hours very powerful dehydration is um still underrated i'll keep preaching it until pe um, people get it it's underrated in the community these these stresses to the body dehydration i've done 7.5 days no food no water i've come back and i feel fucking amazing i've reset my body to a little baby you know i really push myself you know and i'm proud and i'm gonna do longer and i'm gonna do and i'm motivated to do much longer i've got many reasons in my mind to motivate myself to beat that 7.5 don't care about other people. I just want to beat my own best because I know I can. So it's interesting to see how dig, how much further I can dig into it, um, into the dry fast and heal myself, and then break it this time. Because I made a mistake. I'm human, guys. I made a mistake. I broke it with fruits, and I should have broken it with aged urine. <laughs> I love aged urine. I made a big mistake. I didn't break it with aged urine. I was going to break it with an aged urine foot bath, aged urine on my head, massaging to my head, and a little bit up the nose. I didn't. So next time I'm going to do eight days, nine days, and break it with aged urine, do it properly, like I should have done at the beginning. Um, but another thing I can talk about with um, fasting and dry fasting is I did carry a, the way to do it, the way I did the 7.5, and I, don't get me wrong, I did have low energy at the point, but I found it relatively easy. I'm not going to lie, I didn't struggle every day that much. The way to do it is to make health a, a, a daily thing it's not it's not a one-off thing it's not like you know eat garbage don't detox don't exercise don't ground don't get take care of your sleep don't eat good foods don't don't you know don't fast or skip a meal and then all of a sudden do a prolonged fast no don't do that because the you the reason why i found it easy i think i don't mean to show off because i took care of my health before i came into this so your health status before you enter the fast will be key it's how long you can go on the fast, right? So, and Eric talked about this, and it's very true. Once again, the the healthier you are before you go into the fast, the longer and easier you will find the fast. 
That makes sense, right? A purified vessel won't struggle with too much detox or as much detox as an unhealthy vessel. If you're unhealthy and doing a long fast, you have way more willpower than me. You have way more than me. Kudos to you guys if, you, if you're more unhealthy than me and you're doing a longer fast because you're going to suffer more. I don't like suffering. I don't know about you guys, but I struggle with suffering. When I'm weak, I just want to give up. I don't want to do a long eight. Do you think I wanted to do a 7.5 fast? Do you think I wanted to do what I did if I was suffering? It's because I didn't suffer much that I did it. I didn't, <laughs> didn't suffer much. But if I had, because I hadn't taken care of my health on a daily basis, I wouldn't have been in that position. So that's a key thing you got to remember. That's, it's not all about the long... It's not all about the big moves, guys. It's not all about the big moves. So I'm going to do... I'm going to do a 40-day fast, as that guy on my Facebook did today, and I love him. I hope he does. You know, I'm going to do a 40-day fast. How about we start propping people up for the daily actions of health they're doing, the daily shit, and building your health up slowly on a daily basis as prep for the big ones, not just one big event. Life is not one big event, is it? It's not just life and death. There's the middle part. You know, you've got to start building yourself up, your vessel up slowly. Only today I was um, with my brothers, and watching. we were looking at each other's pictures, and, and they were showing pictures of how, the, how they were few years ago when they weren't taking care of their health and the pictures of them now when they are the difference in the body is astonishing it's astonishing what people can achieve when you take when they look after health on a daily basis not big moves when you take care of your health and make small changes on a daily basis 365 days a year you're making small improvements on a daily basis it's amazing how much younger you can look in a year two years three years four years you can use look younger by a lot by a lot, by little step, little action. It's not always about big. You know, you know how I look at it. It's it's a little actions every day, stepping up, stepping up compared to you. But it's also combine that with some nice long prolonged fasts. Because you do the little stuff and take care of your health on a little bit every day. You're gonna find those long fasts like I did super fucking easy. And then you'll be you'll be teaching me about how to do a fucking. You'll be impressing me with your fucking 10 day, 12 day, 14 day dry fast. You know, and I'll be looking up to you guys and learning from you and how to do it. Learning from you, because that's what I want. I want to be learning from people that have done longer than me. You know, there are people that have done longer than from me. That's how I did so long as well. I was inspired by the people doing longer. But I want everybody to be find it easy to do five, six, seven days of dry fasting. That would be my dream. Very easy. It is easy. You just got to take care of your health. Yeah. Definitely. That's what you Oh, that's all right, Sandy, man. You motivated me too as well. I'm very inspired by you for a long time now. I've been following you and loving your, loving your stuff, man. You're living... You're living in different ways, getting paid to do what you love with the massage and eating fruits and dry fasting. It's all powerful therapy and helping people. I love your posts, man. I really do. Definitely. And the fact you're into urine therapy. I just outed you there. <laughs> Hopefully no one's, no one, you know, I'd be too embarrassed of that. You did put it in the comments. But yeah, man, urine therapy is powerful. Especially age urine. I dab myself with 50 minutes of, 50 minutes of my spray bottle, my glass spray bottle. I did with my age urine about two, three weeks old. I sprayed that. I spent 50 minutes on my face, my beard. My thyroid and my neck today, and my face glows. And it, 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 think about that. That's my sense organs it's getting into my eyes, it's getting into my nose, mucus. It's getting into my ears. It's getting into the uh, the thyroid, the um, the pineal, the um, pituitary. The, the by the way, guys, if you do age urine on the temples, which is just here for a couple of minutes, I did it fifty minutes. You do a couple of minutes age urine on the temples, rubbing it in. Yeah, rubbing it in. Your meditation session will be awesome. Because right here is the prefrontal cortex. It's the concentration muscle. So now, all of a sudden, you can meditate and do concentration meditation really fucking easily. Because that aged urine works magic. It gets right into the brain. It heals the fucking brain, the prefrontal cortex, the pineal, everything about the brain. It's crazy. I fucking love it. I fucking love aged urine um, massaging on the face and temples. I don't do the whole body. And um, it will smell, but a little trick that I learned from people, see I'm learning too, is to dabble some fresh urine immediately after on the face and neck, and it won't smell as much. It removes 80 to 90 percent. So dabble some fresh urine, that's the trick for today. Dabble some fresh urine after and it won't smell at all. It's pretty brilliant. I didn't, mate, AJ. I, on the second day I did have, um, I think on the second day, and I have some, since I broke it with fruits um, yesterday, and today I had balance. But no, not during the dry fast itself. I was never worried about it. My stomach shrunk big time. This is normal, though, because I wasn't taking on water as well. There's no water weight going in. No water, no food. So my stomach shrunk quite a lot, um, which was crazy. Um, yeah, really crazy. And I, and I lost 6 kg 
in seven days. And the, we all did, even though the other boys were on fluids, um, Shivambu, and a little bit of lemon water. You know, they, they lost, we lost the same amount of weight. And I lost it in the face. It reminded me of Sean Walsh's 11-day dry fast. I can remember the pictures of his face going gaunt, his eyes getting sunken. I looked at the picture I took just before I broke it with the boys, and my, my eyes were soaken, sunken. It's not a bad thing. It's nothing to worry about. It's only people wor people that worry about that don't get it. They're just big pharma people that don't understand the power of letting your body heal itself and temporarily not giving yourself food and water. It's not forever. I didn't dry fast for fucking ever. What I did was I gave my body a factory reset and I fucking love it and my body appreciates it. My my organs and my muscles and my, my brain I really appreciate the break I've given it and um, I've come back a lot stronger and my brain is very much on fire and I'm very happy. Um, with it and I'm gonna try and do another one next two weeks, maybe try and beat of eight days. So yeah. I think that's it. I don't think Sky's gonna come on today, which is unfortunate. Um but I'm gonna wrap it up there guys. Unless you've got any questions on anything that I do with dry fasting and uh one meal a day or exercise and that stuff. Did we have a one day juice Do you know what I didn't speak about? Um I'd been prepping for it and it's not just prepping, that's the wrong word. My daily pro now forever until I upgrade even more, is the one meal a day, um, fluids within two, three hour window, which always includes 200 to 300 mils of aged urine and some distilled water, then hard dry, 21, 20 hours. That's my daily protocol at the moment, which is not really prepping for it, but it kind of is. But um, I was going to say something. Yeah, what I didn't, didn't, what I didn't say is that I was to come up here and do it with the boys, which I did. But actually, when I got here and I broke, we were going to have one last meal. And Jack was going to cook. Jack's the host. Jack's Jack the bro. Jack the tram. Jack the man. And we did have a last meal. But my prep before my 7.5 day fast was actually, I did one and a half day hard dry fast. And I broke it with the last meal. Do you hear what I just said? I did something powerful. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it is. Before I had the last meal, just I broke the last meal before that with a 36 hour, another one before, 36 hour hard dry fast. That's one half days hard dry. And one day dry fast is the same as three days water. So I'd done 1.5 times three. I'd done 4.5 day fast. And and broken with a last supper. And then I went and did another 7.5. So I'd done a lot of fasting. Not just a 7.5. I'd done 1.5 before. Broken with Jack's nice meal. Vegan. You know, some lovely coconuts and... Coconut crumble, um, he made some roast potatoes, butternut squash, and, uh, yeah, we gorged, I gorged, but it's okay, so that's what I did, I did, I like doing that, I like doing, um, a long fast and then doing little prep ones, little, more to 22 hour fast, hard dry, so I thought I'd step it up to a 36 hour fast, very powerful, here's another piece of advice, each hour that you go in a hard dry fast, it's very powerful and beneficial, each hour, one hour more, one hour more, only one hour more, very powerful. Very powerful. That's why I love the idea of people that aren't into this that much have gone deep into hard dry fasting, working their way slowly from 14 hour hard dry fast a day to 15 hour hard dry. Just one hour more. Then one hour more. And then one hour more. Because one hour doesn't sound like a lot when you're doing a hard dry fast extra, but it's a lot because it's a hard dry fast. It's three hours of a water fast. It's a lot. One hour more a day. If you can get to 20, 21 hours a day, Hard dry fasting, you're at optimal levels of health, rest assured. Then you don't even need to worry. I mean, then all the cooked food stuff gets kicked out so fucking quick. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it gets kicked out very quick at that point. There's there's no way any bad foods can 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 lodge in your system. I'm sorry, people might not like this for me to say in this, but there's no way any bad foods can stay in your system if you're doing 21 hours a day of hard dry fasting. Without the age you're in, mate. It's without the age you're in, just the hard dry fasting. It's so powerful. So powerful. Anyway, okay, that's it. I don't want to go too long. And, um, yeah, I don't know why Sky hasn't come on. It's a bit of a shame. Um, try and get someone on this Sunday. And I hope you learned something from this, um, the 7.5 hard dry fast I've done. And, um, enjoyed my videos I made. I fucking love those videos I made with the brothers. So much fun. It was sad yesterday to break that. Um, you know, like I said, I wish I carried on. I wish, I wish, I think we all do, but life is to be enjoyed and life is to be learned. And uh, I'm proud of myself. And this is, this is not the the end, the longer ones, I will put my possible and give out as much information on it. Never stop preaching hard dry fasting and fruits and age urine and the things that work. And, um, you know, I did at the end of the day to show you it's possible. 
what's possible for me is I was light before I even even started the fast. So, you know, anyone can do it, really. I really believe that anyone can do these seven, eight, nine day hard dry fasts and not lose too much energy. I would have been all I don't know if I had a job, if I've had it easy, but I think I could have done it. Could have done it. I definitely could have done it with urine. I know that in my heart. Just urine fasting is easy. You know, for eight, nine days into and doing work and a job. Yeah, piss easy. But I didn't think a hard dry I could have done it, so we've got no excuses. I just wanted to be an example to other people of how how it's possible um to, to do these things. And the thing with fasting, it's just that it is just the best medicine. It's the most disciplined. And and, and one more thing before I leave. The the thing that I learned during this hard dry fast is that even me, I think we're all programmed and addicted to food. And I and by food I even mean the sweet, juicy fruits. We are all addicted to these foods. Now, I'm not criticizing condemning fruits. They taste lovely. They lower your vibration. Even compared to, like, nothing, they lower your vibration. You know, they really do. We are addicted to food in society. And I knew it logically, but I didn't experience it emotionally. And everywhere I went, until I started doing the hard dry fast, and I realized how addicted I am to food and to water. And But food especially, it's just, we're just bombarded by it in society. Everywhere we go, you know, in the... In, with people we see at the supermarkets, in the shops, in everywhere there's food and, and even your minds, we talk about it, we bond with other people, our friends and family and about what our favourite foods is and, and it's everywhere an endemic and I would love to see a society moving towards not being so addicted to talking, thinking, spending time, food, doing doing food and all this stuff where we can bond with each other but in better ways. I'd rather people bond like me and the boys did on fasting and, and what we were learning in health than, you know, and gorging on ourselves on crap, which other people do in, in a restaurant, and then calling them, you know, socialising is medicine, but I don't think the feeding part aspect of, of um, food while socialising is very good and beneficial. So it really isn't a toxic addiction, food. And I, I'm breaking that cycle. That hard drive has put a seed in me. I need to break my addiction to food. I'm very much aware of it now. I'm more aware of my addiction to food than perhaps people that... And I think people that do long fasts are aware, more aware of their addiction to food than they ever the people that don't, the people that eat constantly and never skip a meal. So I've got a lot of work to do and I'm proud of myself and I would break this addiction to food and I will start eating less more in life, maybe once every two days and really step myself up. I'm determined to purify the vessel to the point where I don't want this addiction. I don't. This is the last of the addictions for me. I mean, the last of the bad addictions, food eating. I'm going to get rid of this. I'll get better and better and better and never stop getting it. You know, I just don't want to be a slave to it, to have, pay money for something. When I know my body is enough as it is on urine and not eating nothing and just surviving on air and sunshine and grounding and exercise. My body's enough as it is. I don't want to be part of the system. If the world goes wrong, I would love to be part of a system that knows I don't need food. I don't need it. It's, it's stupid, annoying, and it dumbs us down. It lowers our vibration. It makes us angry. It makes our, lowers our frequencies. It really does. It, it reduces the people's strengths of personalities. People all have gifts and eating food. And I'm not going to condemn fruits because they are the highest vibration, but really all foods, they really do lower your vibration compared to fasting. And if you can get to a preferian state, that's ultimately where a lot of us should want to go. A state where we're just surviving on air and sunshine and very minimal amounts of food and urine. That's where we, that's where we want, because that's telling us that, that God made us in the perfect way, which he did. You know, we want, to, we want to take our power back from these elites. And their power over us is in food. The elites control us with the food. They control our fruits as well by putting pesticides and bullshit on it. But they control us, even at the level of fruitarianism, with food. They control us. So when we take our power back and do dry fasting for long periods of time, or just urine for long periods of time, that is ultimately taking control away from these bastards that are trying to fucking, you know, make us unhealthy, kill us, and take away our God-given nature. Yeah, we'd save so much, Sandy. So much, it'd be crazy. Um... It's for real. And then that money could be used towards your more passionate and helping more people and becoming a better human being in many other aspects of your life. Yeah, it's crazy. Great. All right, I'm out, guys. Um, have a lovely day. And um, sorry Sky didn't join us today. Don't know if we're going to have him back on, but hopefully you got something out of this. And I appreciate. I actually generally appreciate the guys, you guys for watching. If none of you are watching, I probably wouldn't have made this video. So, yeah, hope you learned something today. I appreciate you all. You're all fucking warriors to me, and I'm learning a lot from each and every one of you. And, um... Stay hungry, love yourself, and, and don't beat yourself up, you know, this is my message as well, it's for me, don't beat yourself up if you have days when you don't crush it with health, you just come up slowly, two steps forward, one step back, that's how I look at life, two step forward, one step back, we all make mistakes, we're all human, 
we all gorge, we all eat too much, we don't fast long enough, we, we know the things, we don't always do it. Just be kind, gentle on yourself, and you'll get there in the end. Everything is as it's meant to be, you know. I really do think, yes, and we will take our power back. That's what we're doing, that's why I build communities, that's why people like Sandy meet up with other people, we all meet up with other people, you know, and really preach this stuff on Facebook and in real life. It's very powerful, life changing stuff. I'm very heavily invested in health now, for the rest of my life, because... This is my jam, this is what I want to do, this is the way I found to help other people, help myself and become the best version of myself and I fucking care about other people just as you guys do. So on that note, right, peace.